Normally, when you define a class, you give it a name, and that name is used on the new statement to create new instances of that class. But it's possible to define a class as an extension of another class and create an instance of it in the same statement and never give the new class a name. I've got a simple program that shows you how this works, but it takes a bit of explanation. When a Java program displays a root or a frame window, the operating system provides a button in the upper right hand corner that closes the window. Java gets a message from this button in the form of an event, but by default, the event is ignored in Java and the window stays open. If you want to shut down the program, you'll need to catch that event and do the shutdown yourself. This notification routine is where the user is asked if he wants to save his files, and some programs ask whether you're sure you want to shut it down. Anyway, I've written a simple program that catches this event and shuts down, and I used an anonymous class to do it. This is about as simple as I could make it. The class extends the frame class, and the frame class has a method named add window listener, where objects that have implemented the window listener interface can be added to the list of those objects to be notified of any window event. One of the defined methods of a window listener is named window closing, and that's the one we want to provide a body for. Now, the window adapter class implements the window listener interface by providing do nothing stubs for all of the methods. This program creates an extension to the window adapter and overrides just that one method. This is the method call that adds the window listener object to the list of those to be notified. Here is where the new object implementing the window listener is implemented. It is instantiated and placed directly into the method parameter list. But notice this method definition. This method is defined to override the previous definition of window closing with a new one. This one isn't empty, it exits the program. Notice now that this new class being created, the anonymous class, is an extension of the window adapter class, but it's never given a name anywhere. The class extension and instantiation both happen in one statement. Once the callback object has been entered, the size of the window is set and it's put on display. Now, with this callback, whenever the close button in the upper right hand corner is clicked, the window should close. This window can now be closed in the normal way. Now you can create an anonymous class and assign an object of it to a reference. The reference will give the object a name, but the class still won't have a name. Here, let me show you. This example creates an anonymous class that is an extension of the rectangle class and provides an override to the toString method. Every object has a toString method that's used to convert it to a string. Whenever an object is automatically converted to a string, it is done with a call to the toString method. And in any class, you can write your own method to override the one that's inherited from the object class. In an anonymous class, you can't add a new method and call it because the reference to the class simply doesn't know about the new method. But you can override any existing method this way. When the toString method is called, the new method is the one that's executed like this.